Humanity's Major Transition from the Age of Pisces to Aquarius by Arjun Wailea Astrology is an ancient art and science dating back thousands of years. It appears in many cultures, but as with most ancient wisdom, much of it has been concealed and forbidden from the public viewing. Secret societies, both those whose hearts are grounded in the goodwill of all of humanity and those driven by greed, personal gain, have also used this type of ancient knowledge. From Atlantis to ancient Sumer, Vedic astrology to ancient Greece, Rome and Egypt, many great minds throughout the ages have practiced astrology and for good reason. Despite its many skeptics, astrology has much to offer. It's also important to mention here that many of our founding fathers of modern science, especially in the fields of mathematics and physics and quantum physics, were all spiritual mystics. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Nikola Tesla A New Age Astrology Speaking For man began at the dawn of Christianity. Prior to this, we had the secret societies, concepts like the Philosopher's Stone and other magical concepts, including the use of magic and sorcery. With the advent of Christianity, the concept of God took their place. Yet more recently, concepts that were used and practiced prior to the beginning of modern day religion have been emerging once more, which is interesting because we are at the end of an age and transitioning into a new one. There is discrepancy among experts where exactly we are, but most seem to agree that we are in a very important transition period. In Western astrology, we are transitioning from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. In ancient Vedic astrology, we are at the beginning of the end of a 300 cycle, currently living in the transition period at the end of the Kali Yuga age. The Vedic doctrine also tells us what Western astrology philosophies do and correlates with the cycles described by ancient Native American wisdom as well. They tell us we are living in the age of darkness, also described in the Mahabharata, a time where mental capabilities reach their lowest point and moral virtue is stripped from the earth. As independent researcher Bibhu Dev Misra writes, when the world soul is full of blackness and corruption and only a small fraction of virtue remains, it slowly dwindles to zero. At the end of the Kali Yuga, men turn to wickedness, disease, lethargy, anger, anguish and fear of scarcity dominate, penance, sacrifices and religions. These descriptions accurately reflect our society's progression. As we move through modern history, this past age, which has lasted approximately 2,100 years, is coming to an end. A conclusion marked by a time when global tensions have never been so high. During this age, humanity has indeed experienced the most darkness, and so it seems, the more ancient a civilization, the more spiritually and technologically advanced they might have been. Also interesting because, after this age ends, we will be cycling back to the beginning of an age that hasn't been seen since the time of great knowledge and understanding of the spiritual sciences, mysticism, consciousness, and nonism in general. This all seems to be part of a massive shift in collective consciousness that is going on today. Carl Jung's Explanation Dr. Jung writes, As we know from ancient Egyptian history, these events are symptoms of psychic changes that always appear at the end of one platonic month and at the beginning of another. There are, it seems, changes in the constellation of psychic dominance of the archetypes or gods as they used to be called, which bring about or accompany long-lasting transformations of the collective psyche. This transformation started within the historical tradition and left traces behind it, first in the transition from the age of Taurus to that of Aries, and then from Aries to Pisces, whose beginning coincides with the rise of Christianity, mentioned above. 
We are now nearing the great change, which may be expected when the spring point enters Aquarius. The quote above is taken from his book, Flying Saucers, a modern myth of things seen in the sky. Carl Jung, contrary to popular belief, was a heavy researcher into the topic of UFOs. During the time he published his book, he also accused the Air Force for covering up information about the subject. Hall explains Young's quote above. Young is telling us that the platonic year is a problem in timing and that we call the processional motion of the equinoxes results in the vernal equinox changing about every 2,100 years and that these changes correspond to the months of the great platonic year which consists of something over 25,000 years. He is telling us therefore that these changes arise in nature in cosmos and space are due to certain gradual transformations of archetypes and that these archetypes mean that in nature this clock is active and that this clock is continuously moving passing from one cyclic division to another he could undoubtedly gather a powerful body of information to prove that of each of these vital periods these periods in which the general dominant of the world changes there has been a mark an important social, psychological change in the life of individuals. Hall then goes on to say, the life of the individual is in relationship to the life of the collective, that this phenomenon of the flying saucers should arise as the vernal equinox moves towards the Aquarian point, and that this consequently implies, as it did to the Egyptians, Greeks and Romans, and also to many Asiatic peoples, a major motion of world consciousness, world pressure, and that this motion is from a water sign to an air sign, and that therefore the atmospheric mystery, the mystery of air, and that which is concealed within air must become increasingly psychologically dominant for a period of more than 2,000 years to come. Human consciousness in space. Scientific literature is clear on the fact that several physiological rhythms and global collective behaviors are not only synchronized with solar and geomagnetic activity, but also that disruptions in these fields can create adverse effects on human health and behavior. The point is, at a biological level, we know that all life on Earth is linked in some way with solar, lunar, and possibly other cycles as well. There is also a great deal of evidence that human consciousness, which plays such a big role in quantum physics and other areas of non-material science, is directly connected to astrology in very peculiar ways. It was not possible to formulate the laws of quantum mechanics in a fully consistent way without reference to consciousness. Quote by Max Planck This article is from collectiveevolution.com.